Oxfam has released a scathing report against the world's wealthiest nations. The Poverty Eradication Organization says advanced economies have deliberately underfinanced the fight against the climate crisis. It says the vast spending on softening the pandemic's economic blow shows that funds could also be prioritized towards preserving the planet. Let's get more on this now with Jan Kowalczyk, who's a senior policy advisor for climate change at Oxfam Germany. He joins us now from Berlin. Welcome to the program, Jan. So you're saying wealthy nations aren't living up to the promise they made more than a decade ago to basically provide $100 billion in annual climate financing. Can you explain to us how far are they falling short exactly? At the moment, developed countries um, are at around $80 billion that they provide every year to developing countries to support um, mitigation, cutting emissions, limiting the emission of greenhouse gases, and uh, building resilience and adapting to climate change. So promised, uh, they did promise $100 billion every year, and they um, have not met that goal in 2020, as promised 12 years ago. And uh, we have now analyzed what their plans are for the future and figured an estimate that they will also not meet the targets not even five years later by 2025 and that all together means that over the years a gap, gap accumulates that will amount to up to 75 billion dollars that developed countries have committed to support developing countries in fighting the climate crisis but are not providing and so that is what we heavily criticized um, of course the consequence must be that developed countries step up their ambition and um, pledge to uh, pledge to increase the support they are providing now Yes, and how does this money, how is it being spent to help battle the climate crisis in those developing countries? What measures are they being used for? They, for all kinds of measures, whatever helps uh, developing countries develop in a low emission way. So let's say the expansion of renewable energies, for instance, or public transport systems, all these kind of things, insulating houses would be another opportunity. Uh, on the one hand, that's for cutting emissions. But on the other hand, um, especially the more poorer and more vulnerable countries, they need the support to adapt their societies to the changing climate. Because whatever we do, we will not avoid um, more climate change, more global warming, more extreme weather events, sea level rise, and so forth. And societies need to be made resilient against it so that people and communities can maintain their livelihoods. And this is what you need to spend um, money on, supporting food security, agricultural systems, water security, and protecting people from the risks of extreme weather disasters, of course. Mm. Uh, and that is especially important for the most vulnerable countries who have contributed nothing to the climate crisis that we see are seeing now. They are just the ones that are at the forefront of the crisis, suffering the impacts caused 
enforced predominantly by the rich countries in the world, which is also the logic why these countries have agreed to provide support. And they do provide that support. It's coming. It has been increasing, but it's not increasing to the levels that were promised 12 years ago. We're now less than six weeks away uh, to those crucial UN climate talks in Glasgow that are due to start in November. Uh, um, of course, whenever we have a global meeting like that, we need the support of both richer and poorer nations. So I'm wondering, how might this uh, funding shortfall for poorer nations affect the outcome of those crucial talks? Yes, you're right. It has not only the very practical a consequence that on the ground actions to protect people from the climate crisis cannot be funded, but it's also a political problem, and that is the upcoming UN climate summit where developing countries will, of course, ask the rich nations, where's the money you promised us to support us? Um, these developing countries have made compromises um, for the past decades in these negotiations. Um, developed countries make compromises. This is always an issue of making compromises to reach a deal and to improve and implement the global climate regime. And now one side, which is the rich countries, are not delivering on one of the promises they made, um, for which they, of course, have asked for something in return from the developing countries. And if the commitment hasn't been uh, uh, fulfilled by the rich countries, then, of course, the poorer nations will wonder, OK, who are we um, to make more concessions um, for what the developed countries want in these talks. And that, of course, can derail or at least undermine uh, the, the success for the COP26 in a, yeah, in a couple of weeks' time. OK, we'll see how all that unfolds. Jan Kowalczyk from Oxfam, Germany, thank you again for joining us on the programme.